All right, so in this video, I wanna go over how to set up FL Studio for like the optimum workflow. Uh, these are all things that I personally do whenever I install FL Studio on like a brand new computer. And if you want more information, check the link in the description. I've done a whole write up uh, going over this, you know, more in depth. Okay, so the first thing I would do after I install FL Studio is first set up an ASIO driver. That's the most important. Um, that will allow you to have a way smoother experience with FL Studio if you're using like the primary driver. Make sure you use at least ASIO for all, or if you have an audio interface, use the audio interfaces ASIO driver. If you're experiencing glitches and pops and stuff like that, you can increase your buffer size. Uh, FL Studio does suggest that anything under 10 milliseconds is unnecessary and it puts like you know more stress on our computer. Okay, so the next thing I do is um, I create a specific production folder and I drag that into FL Studio, into the browser, and that way I can access songs, sounds, and everything from right inside FL Studio. I don't have to be going out into like Windows and you know clicking through folders and stuff like that. And in addition to adding you know your own production folder into FL Studio, creating snap icons is very very efficient. So for example example, you can have one snap that's just for like your sound kits. You can have one snap that's just for like your instruments and effects, you know, like your VSTs. I also have one for like my current song I'm working on. And then I also have one for um, everything. Now, this is a really important one for myself as I'm editing notes in the piano roll is being able to edit the MIDI note from both sides. So usually you can only edit the note from like the right hand side. So as you're editing, you know, you can either stretch it to make it longer or shrink it. And you do this within like the FL Studio settings. Again, you guys can just check out uh, the blog right up and I go over everything with you, just how to set it up. And so another feature I always enable, and this is also to do with the piano roll, is ghost channels. Ghost channels allow us to see other notes within that same pattern. So for example, let's say we had some chords, we would be able to see those chords if we went to now let's say like a bass sound and we can easily add in our bass line because we see our chords. Extremely, extremely powerful and it improves your workflow like tremendously. And then my final point in this list is to enable undo knob tweaks and as well as increase the amount of undos you can do. So like the undo history level. So I usually recommend, you know, around, put it to like 100. This will just allow you to kind of go back far in time. And then the undo knob tweaks, so let's say you're working with like a VST and you're, you know, dialing in like the knobs. Undo knob tweaks tracks that so you can use that within like the history and you can go back in time. If you're doing sound design or, you know, if you're kind of tweaking your sound a little bit, it's just really, really nice to have full control of what you can kind of go back in with your history. All right, so those are my essential things that I always set up whenever I install FL Studio. Hopefully they help you out. Again, just check the link in the description. If there's anything you guys like to set up, you know, special whenever you install FL Studio that it doesn't really come with, you know, let me know in the comments. I always love to learn like workflow tips to improve my own efficiency. Um, so I'm Gratuitous. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one.